InfoSec and CyberWork Hacks are here to help you pass the Security Plus exam. For today's hack, Tommy Gober, InfoSec Bootcamp Instructor Extraordinaire, is walking us through some sample Security Plus questions, providing excellent strategies during exam time to narrow down potential answers in a logical and stress-free way. And the only way you're going to see it is by staying right here for this CyberWork hack. Hey, welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spin-off of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution or a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. So our guest today, Tommy Gober, is an InfoSec instructor, and among his many areas of expertise, he is our boot camp instructor for what you probably all know is the one of the most popular and in-demand certifications, and that's CompTIA's Security Plus certification. So for today's CyberWork hack, uh, Tommy's prepared a, a couple of sample Security Plus questions, and he's going to walk us through uh, how they are constructed and how you should approach them when you're taking the exam. So thanks for joining me today, Tommy. Hey, Chris. Good to be here. Thank you. Uh, so, Tommy, we we heard from some Security Plus cert holders that the experience of studying for the exam and learning the concepts felt different from the experience of conveying the information in the methods required by the exam. So, can you break down the different types of exam questions on the Security Plus? Yeah. So, there's um, a few different types that uh, CompTIA likes to ask on on really any of their uh, certification exams. There's the multiple answer, or I'm sorry, the multiple choice. Let's start yes. with that one. Mm -hmm. Multiple choice, that's A, B, C, or D, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, multiple answer, and that's usually where you're going to see select two. Select all that answer. apply. Yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be, be a mix of those, and it's like to pick the, the top two reasons why. On the CompTIA exam format, they will literally say select two. They're going to tell you exactly how many of the following answers you need to choose. Gotcha. And it doesn't let you move on. If you if you only answer one, it's like select right. two. It's going to be like, hey, Bozo, you need to go back and... Gotcha. It is a now, uh, um, I, I Out of curiosity, uh, on a question where you have to select two, I'm assuming that it's an all or nothing. Like you have to select, you don't get like half credit if you select one right one and one wrong one. Wrong one. You know, that's a good question. So mm -hmm. that is a question that comes up quite a bit in our boot camps is how are these tests scored? And mm -hmm. the official answer is nobody knows. Yeah. Okay. All right. It just it, goes, it, into they, the, goes into the Borg and that's it. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. They, CompTIA has not been publicly, uh, you know, open about how they assess these exams. That said, after taking a few dozen mm -hmm. uh, CompTIA exams over the years, um, I have my suspicions, and I believe that, and you know, this is complete conjecture on my part. It's not official, mm -hmm. but I think that the way that they that they uh, score this is they have a certain number of correct answers uh, expected for you. So if you if you answer all the questions with one hundred percent accuracy, then you get the highest score based on the way statistics work. And whatever. but the if they say select two. I think you can get, you know, you'll get like if the answers are A and B, mm -hmm. I think you can get a half of it correct by answering one of those correct, because I think that counts towards your correct answers. But gotcha. officially, no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and probably probably some sort of magical, uh, you know, um, you know, percentage weight and so forth like they do. with Yeah. The yeah. And everything. Um, when you when when the you, when you you know you've taken the exam you've submitted it and it and it comes back you've passed or failed do you get to see which questions you got wrong? Nope, none of it. It just not, goes into not, the box. Yeah, not directly. Okay. So on the exam, pass or fail, mm -hmm. they will tell you these are the objectives in which you missed at least one question. Got you it. don't know how many questions you missed in that domain. It, you may have just. You know uh, that that uh, that objective may have been represented in two different questions, but mm -hmm. they presented the content differently, okay. and so you're not really sure how did I get that one incorrect or not. And so it just kind of gives you this list, so you don't really know exactly, but you do kind of have an, an, a ballpark idea of like, okay, this is where I kind of need to know more study. And so if you have done a, a per personal inventory of you know, I, I got the objectives from CompTIA. I went through and I listed all these things out and I know these questions are not. If you did a, a, a inventory like that, you know the places where you're weak and you might be looking at the, the test result and be like, yeah, I kind of screwed that up because I didn't 
right. <laughs> you know, right. I, I knew I was weak on that. You, you can you can feel it rather yeah. than your rather than like going question by question. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think the best way to get a feeling for each of these types is to run a couple of uh, example exam questions, Tommy. And you provided me uh, some samples here, so uh, I'm going to share my screen very quickly. And uh, thank you, Vanna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All so right. yeah, the first question that we've got here. Um, so this one is an example of how they're going to throw these acronyms at you. And like I said, vocabulary is key on this exam. So knowing how you, knowing to knowing what the questions, you, first of all, asking and then knowing what are my options. When you glance at these answers, HTTPS, SMTP, TLS, SFTP, what the heck are those? Notice I have not read the question yet. I'm just looking at the answers. I want to first glance at my answer choices, and that's going to kind of frame my thinking. This is just kind of test taking steps in general, but this is going to frame my thinking so that when I go up and read the, the question, I will then be able to understand what are my options. So having glanced at the answers, HTTPS, SMTP, TLS, SFTP, FTP. I don't even know what those are. Let's go back and look at the question and read through it. An organization's chief information officer recently received an email from human resources that contains sensitive information. The CIO noticed the email was sent via insecure means. A policy has since been put in place stating all emails must be transmitting using secure technologies. Which of the following should be implemented to address the new policy? So this is a wordy question, Chris. This is, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But what are they asking? It's saying, which of the following options should be implemented to address the new policy? What's that new policy? The policy has been put in place stating all emails must be transmitted using secure technology. So we're transmitting something. It has to be secure, meaning we're looking for some form of encryption. Encryption is how we send things securely. Okay, so the question is really asking, which of the following is a form of encryption that we can, by extension, send uh, email with. And so our options are HTTPS, SMTP, TLS, and SFTP. Let's unpack what each of those are. Through the bootcamp, we talk about these different uh, technologies, I'll say, these different protocols, and we discuss what they mean, and then we unpack what they are. So unpacking HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, HTTPS. That's for requesting web pages and whatnot. We, we're not transmitting data that way, though these days we do a lot of our, what we do web-based email, don't we? So yeah. plausible answer. Let's, let's keep that one in mind, maybe. Okay. SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. This is your, what your mail transfer agent sends the email out. Whenever I send you an email, Chris, it mm -hmm. goes out from me through SMTP. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really a secure protocol as we discussed in the boot camps. So that one's gonna be off of our list. SMTP by itself is not secure. So we put a line through that. Next up is TLS, transport layer security. This is a uh, form of encryption that we actually will secure a lot of insecure protocols like SMTP. We would use TLS to encrypt that to have SMTPS, or we use that for encrypting hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP. And what we do is we tack on that little S at the end and it suddenly is a secure protocol. So HTTPS uses TLS. SMTPS uses TLS. That's the security that those are providing. So very, very strong contender there. Looking down at our final option there on letter D, Delta, is SFTP. That is secure file transfer, transfer protocol. That is FTP utilizing SSH or secure shell. Um, so that's not really something we would use to normally send email via. And so of these four options, the best one, if you go on the next slide, it will highlight our correct answer is indeed C, Charlie, TLS. More alphabet soup. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Throw these, these, the first uh, one, I, I knew some of those terms. This one, I am out to see. So I'm excited <laughs> to hear about this. But it's that, it's that means like, I know some of these words. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so which of the following should be used to validate in the integrity of data? We got TLS, SSH, MD5, and RSA. Um, what The reason I picked this one out, this is a prime example of how sometimes CompTIA plays their hand. They, they kind of 
clue us into what the answer is just by using a keyword in the question itself. So which of the following is used to validate the integrity of data? One of the things that we do in the uh, in the boot camp is we talk about how in CompTIA land, whenever you're taking one of these certifications, if they are talking about integrity, they mean hashing. And if they're talking about hashing, they are talking about integrity. It's a, it's a two-way street. But if you see that keyword, just know that they are zeroing in on hashing or integrity. Those two go hand in hand. So our options are TLS, transport layer security. We just talked about that. SSH, that's uh, just talked about that one earlier. That is what allows us to remotely connect to a remote host via encryption. Um, I'm going to skip on down to uh, Delta, letter D, and um, RSA, another form of encryption. So TLS, SSH, and RSA all deal with encryption. Only the letter C, Charlie, uses uh, a form of hashing known as MD5. Not bulletproof form of hashing, but a very, very common, often used form of hashing. So the question itself is asking, which of the following is, is a hashing uh, format, protocol, algorithm? And the answer on this one is C, Charlie, MD5. It's the only one of those choices that has to deal with hashing. And because we saw that keyword up there in the question, integrity, we know that hashing is what they're asking about. Awesome. All right, ready? You, you up for one more here? Yeah, let's do it. All right, this is a fun one too. So let's glance down at our answers one more time uh, before we read the question. Okay. Uh, reflected XSS, uh, restored XSS, cross-site request forgery, and then lastly, SQL injection. So first of all, what the heck is XSS? That's the cross-site scripting we talk about. Uh, reflected cross-site scripting is kind of where. Um, an attacker uh, throws some generally JavaScript at your uh, at your machine, and then it uh, says, um, "Here's some data for you to, to process. Here you go. I want you to take this and, and run it." But what you're actually doing is it's actually saying, "I want you to go over that way and get the JavaScript from that system over there." I'm, I'm reflecting it. I'm, I'm sending you off that way to pull the code that's over yonder. Um, B, stored XSS. This is where I gave you the JavaScript. And then the system takes that and stores it into that's database, holds a copy of that so that when any site visitors, users, customers go to the site, that database is presenting its information. Well, it's brought that JavaScript back out and now it's launching an attack on your clients or customers. That's also not good. Cross-site request forgery gets a little bit deeper. It has to deal with um, stealing credentials in order for an attacker to act on your behalf. Um, and then the last one down here is the SQL injection. Um, SQL, the language that we use with databases uh, and so forth. So looking at the, up at the question here, logs from an IDS, which we talked about as an intrusion detection system. Uh, logs from an IDS alerted on a string entered into the company's website login page. The following line was pulled from the HTTP post request. User ID equals Carlos or one equals one and request equals submit. Which of the following was attempted? You know what? We can short circuit this whole question. We don't have to look at anything else. We don't have to think about anything else. The answer to this one is D delta SQL injection. How do I know? Because I wrote the question, Chris. <laughs> but, <laughs> The the, the go-to thing that I want you to, to hone in on, and this is true across all uh, CompTIA certifications, you see right there in the very center of the screen, or one equals one, that's your clue that they're talking about SQL injection. That's uh, CompTIA, again, playing their hand, cluing you in, hey, what are we asking about? They're asking about SQL injection. If you see or one equals one, you can just throw everything else off just about. Don't have to read anything else. You're going to get right there to SQL injection. I do spend a little bit of time. We talk about how does SQL work? Why does this or one equals one um, work? But really what you're what you're looking at, Chris, when does one equal one? Um, All the time, right? Yeah, when you're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one. Yeah. Uh, you know, till the cows come home. It's every day. If if one does not equal one, we have some huge, huge problems in the world. Yes. Um, and so it's just saying this is always going to be true. Um, and because of the way that uh, SQL is processed, it's going to yield far more information than the system may otherwise want to share. And so that's what uh, you're taking some uh, SQL logic 
injecting that into the database it's running and then yielding some information beyond what those site designers would want you to do. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you. That's uh, three excellent uh, examples there. So I want to, before we go, InfoSec Security Plus Bootcamp uh, ends with a practice exam before the actual exam, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, can you tell us how that works and how it helps you to retain knowledge better when it's the moment of truth to take the exam? <laughs> Absolutely. So um, there are different approaches to this. Each, each instructor takes these um, approaches a little differently. What I like my folks to do uh, for my uh, for my boot camp is we spend a little bit of time each evening, um, kind of as as homework. Do it on your own. You don't have to do it right away at the end of the boot camp. You can take a break. You can go for a walk, whatever. Um, but at some point at the end of the day, I want you to go through and take these practice exams. The reason I want you to do that is to get exposure to these concepts. How will these items be presented to you in the in the form of a question, and then. As we're going through the, the course, I want you to be able to, you know, it kind of creates this like learning community where everybody's kind of racing and clamoring and be like, hey, hey, hey that was on the practice exam. Uh, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Love it. So, um, it, it, it. It lets you see how these topics are going to be presented on the exam so that when you get to exam time, you've got some some practice under your belt. You're not going to get that sort of brain seize up where you're like, I've never seen this before. Or the structure. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. Uh, yeah. So what's your best piece of advice uh, for exam day? Good vibes. Okay. Like total chill. I, yeah. When I, when I go to do this, you know, you, you've, you've put in the time, you've put in the effort, you've, you've taken the practice exams. Um, you have prepared for this. It's, it's showtime. Be proud, go in confident, knowing what you know, you may not know everything on the exam. You know, there are times when I go to take these refresher exams, just to kind of understand what, how these, uh, tests have done. I I don't, even after these many years, I still don't ace every one of these because sometimes the questions are just a little confusing or whatever. But you know what? I still go in confident and I still walk out with my you know chin up, held held high because you know I I prepared for this. I am successful with it. So my 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 game day <laughs> test day, I go to uh I, I schedule my exam you know, if you're a morning person, schedule it in the morning. Perfect. If you're an afternoon person, you know, I, I need a little time to boot up, take in the afternoon. I like to go, I like to schedule my exam kind of mid to late afternoon. I like to go and eat lunch at one of my favorite restaurants. And, you know, I, I've got a, a nice cold drink with me. Mm -hmm. I put on some good tunes in the car and I'm headed yes. down to the test center. And I'm just kind of like in a, in a vibe. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, Love I'm zoned out. I'm just kind of walking in zen. So fabulous. Oh, that's a, that's great advice. Uh, so uh, I'm going to leave it there. So Tommy Gober, thank you for making the security plus exam a little less mystifying. I think this is, this is going to be something people are really excited about. So thank you. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, to everyone else, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this video and felt it really helped you, uh, this one, especially, please share it with your colleagues, your forums, uh, and on your social media accounts. I, I'd love to see uh, people uh, letting us know if this really helped them out. And definitely subscribe to our podcast feed and YouTube page. You can just type in Cyberwork InfoSec on any of them and you're on your way. Uh, so there's plenty more to come, including a couple more Security Plus from Tommy here. So if you have any uh, topics you want us to cover, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, but until then, see you next time and happy learning. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.